money, man. and every one of you doing on this amazing Monday. I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great. Even though right now times, you know, have been kind of difficult and stressful. If you could hit that like button, if you could hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button to get all these videos when they're new, if you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help, and support the channel. We speak about addiction, life, prison, whatever it is. We'll talk about it. I do interviews. It's what the channel is about. But you know what? Honestly, somebody, you know, I've been having a really difficult time. And I haven't even told everybody everything about it on my channel. But there's just a lot of personal stuff going on in my life. Just with my living arrangements. Okay? So it's been really wearing me down, stressing me out keeping me up at night and it's really been difficult for me and it's been easy to fall back on negative and pessimist pessimistic behavior but one of my comments said to me you need to be grateful you need to be grateful of the things that you have achieved the things that you have right now the fact that you're still alive you haven't got COVID your family members haven't uh, contracted COVID and that person was absolutely right plus I thought about it. I went back and I thought about all the times that I put my own life in danger. I put my life at risk and I could have very easily died. And I came up with five basically sections. I wouldn't even necessarily say specific times because some of them have many times. But I came up with five times that obviously I've done some videos about as well. Some of these. But that I could have very easily died. And, and it made me... Be thankful again and grateful again and that's just been amazing for me so the number five time that I've almost almost could have could have very easily lost my life was in prison we jumped this guy he called our range a goof range because we stood up to him because he was trying to bully the TV and he was just some guy on the block called the range a goof range he got jumped it backfired on me. I almost got cooked because of it, but because I have some stand-up friends and some people that were willing to ride for my cause, it all got squashed for me. But very easily, that situation could have got bad. I remember one time, before I knew the beef was squashed, I came back from court to the bucket, and I walked on the block, and there were three guys from the squad of the guy that I had jumped. And, you know, behind the scenes, my boys had squashed the beef for me at this point. But I didn't know that when I walked on the block. So I was pretty much ready for anything. But right away, I was told that things were good. But I knew deep down inside, that was one time things could have got very bad for me. And you know what? A lot of the time when you go through these things, you don't really see them as that at the time. Or super dangerous at the time. But believe me, they are. And, and it's amazing how many times I've put my life at risk. Then, the number four time I put my life at risk unnecessarily was a high-speed chase through Aurora and Richmond Hill. I spoke briefly on it in the past. I literally had a demolition derby with the cops, which could have got me shot. Many things. They could have put down uh, 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 spikes could have sent me off the street I could have crashed I could have died then I drove into a gas station where I very easily could have hit a pump hit some gasoline and caused an explosion but luckily that didn't happen so the number four time that I put my life at risk and very easily could have died was the high-speed chase and you know what at the time I thought it was funny I thought it was gangsta I just remember my boy Literally being in the passenger side rolling a blunt in his mom's van and his mom calling because she can hear the sirens from the house and me looking at him and saying, bro, it's your mom's van. What do you want me to do? And him looking at me and do what you got to do. And bah, bah, demolition derby. 
Then they sicked the German Shepherd on me after I was cuffed on the ground. Which probably wouldn't have killed me, but man, that was all time bad. So, the number three time that I put my life at risk, that I very easily could have been hurt, killed, was being confronted by people in their houses. When you do break and enters, sometimes people are home, they're asleep, and a lot of people don't do what I do, which is leave automatically, I'm not going to confront, was never willing to confront somebody in their own house, which is not something that I would have done. But very easily, they could have woken up, confronted me, and there's a situation. And who knows what kind of things people have. They could have machetes, knives, guns, whatever it is. And you know what? If somebody's got kids, if somebody just feels scared, you don't know how they could react. And I could very easily have lost my life from that. But I remember the one specific time that I've also spoken about briefly, where I was in the house, I walked out, and there's this guy confronted me and he was a guy about my age about my size who very easily could have had a strap very easily could have had a gun I had a crowbar could have gotten really bad I could have lost my life to violence or I could have lost my life to prison and in the moment it seemed like nothing it seemed like nothing it's crazy to me when I list all this stuff it's crazy to me that I went through this like all nonchalant like it meant nothing like it was super nothing you know it just shows you the kind of the kind of mind state you can get in when you're on drugs and you're in some drug induced psychosis it can get a little a little bit crazy so the number three time that i almost lost my life like i said or could have lost my life was being confronted by somebody while going into their house now the number two time i could have lost my life and this happened a couple times was being downtown with dumbass friends with big mouths who run their mouths when they're drunk and intoxicated, start beefs with people who are very obviously way deeper and probably have guns or knives or weapons. And twice, it almost got into a situation with me. Once my boy called this guy a fake gangster, I was like 17 or 18 years old, had snuck into uh, some club downtown Toronto. My boy calls this guy a fake gangster. The guy gets into a scrap with the bouncer, runs across the street, comes back with his hand in his pants, very obviously with a strap, with two guys that weren't with them when he ran away. And when they drove away, the license plates were peeled off the car. And my buddy, who's no longer my buddy, is hiding in the alleyway like a girl because he realized that he could have lost his life for his big ass mouth. And then another time, my dumbass old best friend me, him, and our girls are downtown. We're literally down on Queen's Key after leaving the government in the middle of the night. It's like 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. These guys literally, it's me and my boy and him and his girl and my girl in one car and us in the other car. These guys walk over, this guy walks over to the car, asks the girls for a smoke, and then walks back. No disrespect. He, cli he jumps out of the car. She wouldn't want to talk to a Gumby, and he's just such a jackass. He doesn't realize how stupid he sounds. But they obviously snap. They all come running over. He jumps in his vehicle and dips out because they're smart. And my girl is sitting in the car with the window fogged up saying, I can't drive yet. I can't drive yet. I can't see. The windows are foggy. Stick your head out the damn window. You don't know what these guys are going to do. And there's two carloads of them. Get the hell out of the parking lot. He's gone already. Their anger is going to be turned on us. Get out of here. So the number two time that I could have lost my life very easily was being downtown with friends that have big mouths. And the number one time that I very easily, that I reflect on as a time I could have lost my life was in the Don Jail, I almost got jumped by a group of people that included some of the guys that ended up killing somebody on the same range a week later. And you know, in the moment, I was like, ready, you know, you know, I didn't think like, you don't think like that. I didn't anyways at that time, because up till that point, I hadn't seen anybody killed in prison. But when that person got killed, it really, really, really hit me home. Especially seeing his body laying there with crap le leaking out the back of his head because he has taken so much blunt force trauma. And reflecting on how close I was to being into it with the same people and could that very easily have gone the same way for me. 
I want to thank the person who left that comment because it made me go back and think about all the times my dumb ass almost lost my life. And it makes me super, super, super grateful for what I have now. I have an amazing relationship. I have a great job. I have a place to live. I have uh, my parents and family is amazing. My girl's parents and family is amazing. So all around my situation is great. I have my channel, which I love. I talk to my subs all the time. It means the world to me that I'm able to help people and I'm able to uh, uh, really contribute back and try and uplift a community that I was once majorly impacted by. Addiction, criminal lifestyle, trauma, PTSD, it all goes hand in hand and it can't be taken lightly. I share my experiences with you guys so you don't have to go through these things yourself. Obviously, if I could snap my finger and make sure nobody ever goes to prison again, that's what I would do. But that is not a reality. That's probably just not going to happen, especially in the climate we're living in these days. So please, at least if my videos can do anything, take them, take the knowledge and learn from them. If you're going into prison, be smart. Don't go in there acting all crazy. Also, don't go in there acting all, all shy and bummy because things can go bad for you. And if you're going through the addictive lifestyle, patience. You have to want it. You have to want it. I love each and every one of you. So hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get all these videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help, and support the channel. The link is in the description. So, I'm going to leave with this. We are our own worst enemies. Every single time my life hits a speed bump, chances are it's something that I've done to cause that to happen. Now, obviously life can get hard and obstacles can get thrown in your way. It's how you handle them that determine what kind of man or woman you're going to be in your recovery or your lifestyle change. Love each and every one of you. The new Matt Clark.